swath of land here. It starts to the north, Seal Beach, Sunset Beach, down through our biggest city in the district, Huntington Beach, uh, Costa Mesa, Fountain Valley. We got little bits and pieces of Westminster, Garden Grove, and Santa Ana because of the redistricting here. Um, then we've got all of Costa Mesa, Newport Beach, Laguna Beach, all the way down to Laguna Niguel and Aliso Viejo. The line stops right there at Dana Point. So tell so. people who you are and where you're running for Congress, just okay, so people I'm have a Laura Oatman, and I am running uh, in U.S. Congressional District 48 against incumbent Dana Rohrbacher. And he has been in office for over 30 years now, and he may have once represented what this district was all about, but he no longer represents Orange County anymore. So it's become a lot more progressive, a lot more diverse, and I am running to unseat that old dinosaur uh, once and for all. I'm with Laura in uh, Orange County, California, and she is running for District 48 to unseat a Republican incumbent, incumbent in the age of Trump. And as you know, if you've been watching these, I'm on the road because on my own nickel and as a private citizen with a Facebook following and all the rest of it, because of my writings, I want to do something, anything, desperately for my children and grandchildren to try to put a check and a balance on the insanity of the Trump years and the GOP and all the rest of it. So today I'm going to be talking to Laura. I'm going to be asking her why she's running. And I'm going to ask you to donate to her campaign. I'm going to ask you if you live in this part of California to volunteer and above all to vote. And if you're not from around here, then at least be encouraged that there are new progressive, wonderful people like Laura jumping into the fray to try to literally save our country. And that would be melodrama in any other year, but not 2018. That's what it's about. So please listen to her and help. My name is Frank Schaefer. I'm a writer, author of Letter to Lucy, a manifesto of creative redemption in the age of Trump, fascism, and lies. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Gracie, look up. This is your, your moment. Okay, so introduce yourself again and just tell me a little bit about yourself and why you're running. Okay, so I'm Laura Oatman and I am running for Congress against Dana Rohrbacher here in District 48, which is in Orange County, California. And I have lived here most of my life, actually. I was born in Los Angeles, moved down here when I was 16 to start at UC Irvine, went to UCLA and uh, met my husband Homer there. So my husband Homer and I are both architects. We've lived in Orange County for over 40 years now and uh, raised our five children here. I'm a licensed architect. I'm also a lead accredited architect, which means I design environmentally friendly buildings. I love rescue dogs, by the way. <laughs> She's pawing at me as I talk. Um, we've lived here you know, most of our lives, raised our children here, and um, now, you know, small business owners. After Trump was elected, it was like slamming into a brick wall. Uh, we just felt like the wind had just been taken out of our sails. Unbelievable. Uh, we, after all the work that we had done um, over the last eight years to build up our small business, um, to get our family back on track, our business back on track, our finances back on track, because of the initial uh, recession, which occurred in the Great Recession of 2007, 2008. We, um, you know, both my husband and I both got laid off at that time. Um, we went for a while without health insurance. Our family was without health insurance. We had to choose between keeping this house that we're sitting in here today where we raised our five kids as a safety net for all of us or paying for health insurance. And so we chose to hang on to the house by the skin of our teeth. And uh, so here we still are. But eight years later, the business is doing well. But when Trump was elected, all of a sudden, everything that we have worked so hard for is again at risk. Uh, we're worried again about Wall Street greed taking over, our banking industry becoming unregulated, uh, the rich are getting richer, uh, the poor are getting poorer, and we're seeing again the exact same symptoms as uh, pre-recession last time. So I'm running uh, for a couple of reasons, a couple of big reasons. One is uh, I'm running on a vision of a more progressive economy for jobs, for the future, not just of this district, but of this country. Uh, and I'm running for climate change. Quite honestly, um, the environment has always been something that has 
very important to me, having grown up in LA pre-EPA, um, back in a time when pollution um, was, was going unchecked. And I realize how important it is to save our planet. We cannot let these big corporations get away with uh, deregulating all of the environmental protections we've had in place for so long, all for the sake of, of making more profit. Um, it's immoral, and it's quite frankly obscene what's going on right now under this current administration. We need people in Congress now who are real people, who have been without a job, who have struggled for a bit, who have started their own businesses, um, who have been without health care, who are not you know, your typical corrupt politician or your multimillionaire. We need real people in Congress, and we need it now. Well, you know, Laura, it seems to me that what we have to understand about this present moment is something like, I guess, uh, an analogy with that old Frank Capra movie, It's a Wonderful Life. You know, that it seems to me, anyway, that the arc of my life has been totally derailed by the election of Donald Trump. What I hope for my children and grandchildren is now anyone's guess what's going to happen. We're in a different place. And it seems to me the best analogy is that old favorite it's a wonderful life, as if Potter had won, as if, uh, as if George Bailey gave up, as if we were in Pottersville. These people really boggle my mind. I've been involved in politics for a long time. I was part of the religious right in the 70s and 80s. I knew the Bush family personally. I have handwritten notes from Reagan and both Bush presidents. Mm -hmm. I used to stay in Jack Kemp's basement in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. I was sitting there one night with him and Bob Dole mapping out how we could use the pro-life cause, as we called it back then, to bring in Republican votes. And I bailed and got out uh, in the 80s and 90s just in disgust with the, mm -hmm. the right wing. But now we've gone to another planet. This isn't regular American politics. You could disagree with George Bush or dislike Ronald Reagan, but you didn't feel the world had ended. Mm -hmm. I feel we're on the cusp of something literally apocalyptic. I believe that we are at a critical moment in our history, in our nation's history. We are literally in a battle for the soul of our country. And we're not talking about just the Republican Party. We're talking, too, at times about some of the Democrats as well. We need to become, once again, a nation of the people, by the people, for the people. We need everyone to have equal opportunities. And it's just insane to me that the religious right, the evangelicals, all seem to believe they call themselves Christians, but yet, you know, I was, I was raised in, in a Catholic faith. And everything that I was ever taught as a child growing up through going to church was that we must care for those that are the least among us. We have to shelter the homeless, feed the hungry, care for the poor, take care of each other. We have to take care of each other. And that is the basis of, of really Christian values. It seems like the economy now, when we most need to be helping the working class and the middle class, is going towards helping the ultra-wealthy and the powerful. At a time when we should really be digging deep into our Christian faith, our religious roots, our passion, our values for helping people, for the poor, for the least among us, we are doing the exact opposite. And it's the very same people that claim to be Christians, that claim to care about people, that are mercilessly taking away all of the safety nets for those that are being left behind in this current economy. We've got a lot of things going on in this economy that um, need to be addressed specifically through policy. We've got a rapidly changing world. We've got a world that's affected by globalization, climate change, technology, and there's a lot of folks that are just being left behind through no fault of their well, own. This may sound a little strange, but we're sitting in Southern California a few miles from where I shot four very unmemorable feature films in the 80s. I was in the movie business. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's coincidental that the Har Harvey Weinstein inter international fiasco in terms of abuse, sexual abuse of women and all the rest of it is breaking at exactly the same time as the whole Donald Trump era. Mm. Yeah. I, I just, in a sort of a karma sense, 
it just seems inevitable. A molester, a, wo- a, a self-admitted molester of women is mm-hmm. sitting in the White House. Right, yeah. You know, the fake president from House of Cards gets fired and his agent drops him, but the real president who grabbed Isn't women by the crotch ironic. without their permission yeah. is sitting in the White House. I just, just The irony is just say things. unbelievable. Say things. <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah, you know, uh, in, here we are in the age of Trump, and I mean... I am a woman running for Congress. Right now, we have got, first of all, we have the first female um, presidential nominee in history that was defeated, um, not just by any man, but by the world's most horrible, misogynistic, terrible man who looks at women as if they are just objects. Um, So there's that. And then heading into Congress, hopefully, God willing, there are only less than one in five are women, and this is a time when we really need to stand up for our equal rights. Um, ever since Trump has been in office, we have seen uh, slowly but surely, bit by bit, our reproductive rights being taken away from us. We have um, a new Supreme Court justice, and God knows how many more are going to be replaced under this man, um, but I'm seriously worried about women and our continued right to choose and have control over our own bodies. So this whole Me Too thing that's coming out now, it's it's just so strange that everybody's up in arms over, like you said, these actors and people in Hollywood, and yet we're just completely overlooking our current president, who is probably the most uh, women, uh, I'm trying to think of the right words, female unfriendly president yeah. that we have had in a very long time. We. We've had the you know the right to choose for uh, how many years now? Maybe right. forty years. Yeah, closer. Something yeah. maybe something like plus. that. Yeah. Forty plus, and yet now here we are in twenty seventeen, with that right to choose. Well, and his vice president taken away. is a theocracy fan. You know, he comes from the Reconstructionist wing of the evangelical movement, mm-hmm. which believes in taking the Old Testament literally and applying it to gay people, transgender people, women who have abortions. Yeah. Anything, oh. you know, that you have to understand that if Pence was able to become a mullah and run our country like Iran, he literally would. Mm-hmm. He's a fan of my father's writings, mm-hmm. Francis Schaeffer back, who helped found the religious right. I know what I'm talking about here. He is, look, there are evangelicals who are less extreme and more extreme. Isn't it amazing that mm-hmm. just like our president is an extreme woman abuser mm-hmm. on the Harvey Weinstein scale lifetime, he bragged about it mm-hmm. on radio oh, shows yeah. all his life. His vice president represents the extremist wing of the religious right. We have people left to their own devices. This would be Vladimir Putin running a theocracy if you combine these two people. And I don't think a lot of Americans understand really understand what we, got, this yeah, is what we got here yeah i mean yeah we're we're being uh, the world is being taken over by these plutocrats these this theocracy that is uh, based unfortunately on religious extremism between saudi arabia and uh, and our country it it's really getting scary i don't understand what their vision of the future is what is their vision? Yeah, you can see it on Hulu. It's called Handmaid's Tale. And I know that's, oh. that's extreme, mm. but in a literary visual sense, their vision is one where white dominant males rule and everybody else is a second class citizen. I flew halfway across the country, actually the whole way across the country, Boston to LA, I should know my geography better, coast to coast, <laughs> to spend my own nickel to interview a congressional candidate. Why? Because these are not ordinary times. And I have a little bit of a Facebook audience. I'm not famous, but I do have some people that watch my stuff. And every little bit counts. And I would just like you to help Laura get elected. Laura, make your pitch. Yes. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much. If you like what you have heard, please check out my website, oatmanforcongress.com. Sign up, volunteer. doesn't matter where you live in this country. We need to flip at least 24 seats in Congress from red to blue. We need all of your help. So volunteer, sign up, and donate today. Whatever you can give, no amount is too small or not gratefully and graciously received. Thank you so much. Yeah, and this is serious business, people. I'm a writer. I'm not a millionaire. I'm spending money traveling the country trying to show there's a new face to the Democratic Party that isn't Trump's face, but it isn't the old Democratic Party either. True progressive candidates who are going to take this country back, not for themselves like Trump's billionaires, but for us. 
for you and me. I'm standing in an ordinary kitchen with an ordinary person who's running because she wants to change this country. Thank you. My name is Frank Schaefer.